welcome back to the show today. We are talking about how I personally would fix the NBA. I believe the NBA is really awesome, I really enjoy it, but I think there are a few things we could do to eliminate the problems we all know are there. So let's start with the first problem with the NBA, tanking. Tanking has become a natural part of the NBA that every team does. And the reason they do it is because tanking benefits them. The NBA has created a system that has incentivized some teams to put a bad product on the court by rewarding them with a high draft pick. Because the worse your team is, the better your odds are at getting a top tier prospect. The intention is to maintain parity in the league and to ensure the teams that are failing every season do get some help, which in theory is a good idea. But teams have taken advantage of that and said, we're gonna be as bad as we possibly can be at the hopes of getting a Victor Wembanyama or a Zion Williamson. You may think, well, hey, that's their decision. If they wanna put a G League lineup out there, by all means, do it, lose a bunch of games. If they wanna eat the cost of having no one come to their games or having zero televised games, that's on them. Well, the problem is the NBA does revenue sharing. So most of the money gets divided up amongst all the teams, meaning the Wizards are making money off the Warriors, who have an incredibly lucrative franchise. But the main reason tanking is bad is because a quarter of all NBA games are meaningless. In European soccer, your position in the standings matters. Depending on where you place at the end of the season, you could qualify for a major tournament. Your team could move up to a better league or brought down into a lower league where you make less money. The stakes are high for every team at the end of the season. No one's phoning it in. In the NBA, at the end of the season, there are 10 or 11 teams who are games are of no consequences to anything. How many people at the end of this season are going to go to a Pistons Blazers game? None. No one's going to watch that. Maybe a sicko fan who wants to see who the Detroit Pistons second round draft acquisition is shaping up. But that is one twisted bastard. The league has obviously talked about demoting teams to the G League and bringing G League teams up to the NBA, but the infrastructure is not there. That is not happening. So how are we going to solve this problem? My idea is that if a team does not get over 18 wins, their first round draft pick, the next one they have available goes to 30th. I think that's fair because it lets teams be bad, but not too bad. It forces them to take their season seriously and win at the end of the season. Fans are going to come out to root for their team to make sure they're not getting the last pick of the first round of the draft. We saw consolation stakes this year with the Detroit Pistons. We were tuning in to see if the Pistons were going to have the longest losing streak in NBA history. Not because we took joy in the Pistons' sufferings, because it was history. It was interesting. So if you embed these stakes for lower performing teams, they're always going to try. They're never going to give up. Another problem I have with the NBA is draft rights. I really don't like the idea. I think a player should have some agency in deciding where he wants to play. After a rookie is drafted, he's kind of locked in for four years of playing with the same team, even if he doesn't like it. I'm not saying get rid of the draft entirely, but I do have a solution. Keep the draft, keep rookie scale contracts. I think those are good. But allow a player to decline his rookie scale contract and alternatively let him sign a one year deal, league minimum with any team that he wants. That's about a million dollars. It's not a lot of money. The rookie scale contracts are pretty big and they're guaranteed for a couple years. So I don't think any player would ever do this, but it's good that they would have the option. It would at least give a player the option to say, I don't want to go to that team because it's not going to be good for my career. Another perk is this player could say, I'm going to bet on myself because after that one year league minimum, he could sign a rookie scale contract with the team that he signed with. And if that team doesn't offer him that rookie scale contract, he could sign it with another team. Obviously, there's a lot more to discuss with this rule, but that's the gist of it. The next idea I had is a mutually assured no trade clause. This means that a player could not be traded under his contract under any circumstances, none. If he wants out, he can't go. If the team wants him out, he can't go. I know this sounds stupid, but hear me out. The reason it sounds stupid is because if both parties want to separate from each other, they should be able to, but no, I don't think you should be able to do it because this rarely ever happens. Usually a guy wants out and the team doesn't get enough in return, so they don't trade him or the guy doesn't want to be traded to a certain team. No one's really happy at the end of it. Also, the league doesn't want trades. The league wants players to stay with their city and build a connection. I don't think the league likes player empowerment. And I don't think they like the players being traded like Yu-Gi-Oh cards every offseason. They want dynasties, they want legacies. So I think there should be a salary cap exception for any player who signs a mutually assured no trade clause. It would be like a marriage between the team and the player officiated by Adam Silver. Imagine if Donovan Mitchell signed a five year hard no trade clause with the New York Knicks. That would be his team. He has no way out. They have no way out from him. Their futures are entwined. Plus that contract wouldn't count towards the salary cap. They could keep Brunson. They could keep Randall. Don't get me wrong, trades are fun. Trade rumors are fun, but we're oversaturated. Now it just feels like players are unhappy and teams are unhappy with their players. It would be nice to see more consistency amongst the teams. That's why we like weddings, right? We celebrate commitment. We think it's cool. The next change I would like to see is the refs have 60 seconds to review a call. If you can't tell if a call is wrong in 60 seconds, the play stands. The call stands. It stays the same. Keep playing basketball. These reviews are taking forever. This isn't a criminal court case.
case, let's move on. And this is crazy. No timeouts during the last two minutes of the game. Figure out your lineup. Coach from the sideline. No getting the ball at the half court. Take it from the baseline. Let's keep this thing moving. The last five minutes of a game take 30 minutes. I think it ruins the basketball viewing experience, doesn't it? Another end of game change I would make is let a team that is in the bonus decide if they want to shoot free throws or take it from out of bounds. Maybe some people like the free throw contest at the end of the games, but I don't. I know there's strategy in it, but I always find myself with 45 seconds left in the game deciding whether I should turn the game off or not. Inevitably, every close NBA game gets dragged out like 15 minutes of viewing too long. And my last suggestion is let playoff teams pick their opponents. If you're seeded one through three, you get to pick who you play in the playoffs in the first round. A lot of times there's a seven or eight seed that gets hot or they maybe had an injury earlier in the season and people don't want to play them. Then you'll have teams trying to lose at the end of the regular season to avoid that team. I remember the last game of the season, it was like the Clippers and the Nuggets and they were both trying to compete to see who could lose the game so that they could avoid the Lakers. It sucked. It made them look like cowards. I think this would help the regular season too. Teams would try as hard as they could during the regular season to put themselves in the best position for the playoffs. And on top of that, let them pick their opponent in the second round of the playoffs too. Why not? Also, it would make the matchups more personal. You would look at another team and say, we think you're weak and we're our best option. We think we can beat you. And then if that team beats you, that's a sting. That hurts. It makes for great TV. All right. Well, those are my suggestions. If you don't like them, please let me know. I will reply. I always reply. So, or let me know your suggestions as well. I'd like to hear those. Maybe I'll do a video on those. So, be good to your mom, eat a corn dog, uh, much love.